Okay, so let me show you something that kind of excited me when I was researching Frisco Ghost Town. It's, it's, it's just kind of fun little facts, but at the same time it landed me somewhere where I really am excited about metal attacking. So if you see this line right here, this line is where the old railroad track used to go. And you can see where it came over here to the, to the main silver mine and then how it also forked and came around here. So when I saw that, not only was it cool that it's like, oh yeah, I'm using Google Earth, I literally can see where the train went back then. I found out that it was the largest railroad at the time of the 1890s and that Brigham Young and the LDS Church paid for 50% of the railroad cost and then the Frisco town itself and the mine owners um, and sure, hold, holders paid for the other 50% to get the train to come here. Now, what I did find out is the train came and left every day. Okay, so what excited me about this railroad, you know, I started thinking about it. I'm like, wait a minute, there was a railroad going in and out every day. And so I was thinking, wait a minute, if there's a railroad, then, you know, they would have to have big structures. There was a lot of people working there, you know, all that kind of stuff. So I started thinking about it. We're going to go to Frisco and we're going to have all these metal detectors. I'm like, not only do I want to metal detect to this area right here where Frisco was, where there was 6,000 people, um, but I also wanted to follow the railroad track. And you can see right here, the blue line right here. And here's where the silver horn mine was. You can see where the railroad came here. They loaded it up and came back out. But what... <clears throat> was even new information for me is where I saw the railroad continued on over here. And that's what caught my attention. And then I started thinking, well, you know, I start, I made this trail here and I was following it and I was like, well, where is it going? Why is it coming over here? And I saw that it stopped right here at this mine. And I was like, okay, so if there's a railroad tra or there's trains going back and forth once a day, there must be a lot of ore that's going back and forth. So I found out that they were sending it up to Provo, Utah, where the smelter was. But now here's a fun fact. This is the one that excites me. So a lot of people know about Frisco, ghost town. A lot of people are going there with metal detectors, right? What I like to do is find a place that is a little bit off of the beaten path where there hasn't been that many people. So yeah, I am going to metal detect Frisco and you know that area. But what excited me is that I found history off the beaten trail was a place called New House. So this New House, when I started looking at it and I followed the railroad track, Look at what I found. So right away, again, large structure. This whole thing right here is all rusted out from all the metals that have been there. It was built roughly in uh, 1880. Um, you can see the big columns and the structures. And I started looking around like, wow, look at these structures. I can even see the railroad track or the tides of the railroad track right here. You can also see, fun fact, I like this kind of stuff. You can also see railroad tracks coming out of the ground right here and they didn't take them out and it's still running that way. Um, but anyways, so when it comes to metal detecting, not only do I have this train depot, this big building where the, where the train stopped and they loaded it up, all of a sudden I'm like, wait a minute, if that's a town, there has to be homes, there has to be structures. And when it comes to metal detecting, if you can find these old places where, yeah, the men were gone all day mining or whatever they were, bankers or laundry guys, it doesn't matter. But where they sighted at the end of the day every day, that's what excites me because that's where they kept their money. That's where silverware was, plates, you know, whatever it was, their belongings. And because they didn't have air conditioning and it's out in the middle of the desert, I guarantee you they spent a lot of their time on the front porch. So... When I saw that, I had to find where they lived because there had to be homes right here to sustain this train depot every day. And then all of a sudden, bam, here it is. Right here where I zoom in, I see all these homes, structures everywhere. There's foundations everywhere. This whole thing right here is just loaded of homes and structures. There must be about 20 of them at least. Now, because it's off the beaten trail, like what I talked about, uh, Frisco, I'm not saying we won't find anything there with a the melee detector, but now imagine a place that's not on the map. This new house does not come up on any ghost towns in Utah. There's no website about it. I happened to find it because I got into the train uh, um, uh, documents and it talked about the last stop as far east as you can go. Oh, I'm sorry, as far west as you can go in Utah. I talked about a place called New House. So since it's off the beaded trail, there's not much information, but I actually use Google Earth to find the exact locations of these homes. Now that is a place I can imagine that many people have not 
mentally tech because they don't even know what's there. And that's what I want to do. When I take out the guys, I really want to mentally tech this one. Because like I said, the money that they buried underneath the floorboards, maybe the guy was drunk. You know, he had a couple quarters in his pocket and he dropped them. And, you know, who knows what's out there. But I have a big feeling that that has not been hit and definitely not been hit with the kind of metal detectors that we have. So, How far away is that from Frisco? Um, you got a good, if you follow the way the road has to go, you have to follow the modern day road right here. You got a good, as a crow's foot flies, let's just say, um, oops. That's not how the crow flies. Well, okay. I'm sorry. Yeah, not as a crow flies. Uh, I mean, they the might, but yeah. it would be a pleasure. And you're right. And no one would be able to do that. So it would have to be on foot or by car. You got eight miles away. No, that's not bad. And there are no signs. The road that turns off right here to go this way, there are no signs at all that say that there's, you know, an old town or follow this to these old structures. There's nothing. So it's been erased from history unless you really do your history and dig into those documents. But I'm telling you, that's what I'm stoked about. I'm gonna go here and show you guys the old town. We're gonna do some mine explorations and look at the structures, go to the cemetery that's right there. But when it comes to melee detecting, that's where me and the guys are gonna be focused and spending most of our time on.